Hi again, everyone. I'm Gene Renee with Enjoy Beekeeping, and I just want to say thank you for coming to the channel and checking out today's video. And today's video is actually a continuation of a honey harvest that I've been doing, but I wanted to break it up so that you could kind of have this in uh, the right doses as far as what I'm doing with what particular hives, because I've got three different beehive styles that are running in my apiary. Uh, one is the traditional Langstroth hives, and I run five frame medium nukes, and for many, many years I raised and sold nukes, and I still do, and I raised them in that five frame Langstroth hive setup. Now the other two that I have in the apiary is uh, the Lands hive system, and I've got a video um, not too long ago about that particular honey harvest if you want to go back and check it out. And today I want to talk to you about the horizontal Langstroth hive, and that's the one that we're going to feature in today's video. So if any of you folks out there are looking into horizontal hives, um, this is one way that you can do it. Um, this is not the one that I think is the best, but it's one way that you can do it, and I just want to show it to you so you can kind of, you know, take it in and, and make your own call if you want to do this or not. Horizontal hives are very advantageous over the traditional ones that you stack. So if um, maybe you've had a back injury or you just don't like to lift heavy stuff, um, horizontal hives are great for people like you. I'm starting to become people like that and uh, I don't like to lift heavy stuff as much as I used to. So, you know, I can still do it, thank goodness, but um, this, is, uh, this is just a, a better system overall. And um, the hive that we're going to look at, we're just going to look at one. The hive that we're going to look at today is a colony of bees that I actually got out of a tree. So if you hadn't seen the videos that kind of led up to the point where we're at today, I got a call from a, a buddy of mine and um, he had a tree taken down on his property that had bees in it and it had probably housed those bees for many years and so anyway he called me to rescue them and so we did the rescue and I brought them home and this is the hive that I put them in. Now what I did when I installed them was I had um, five frame medium Langstroth frames that were left over from the year before so I tacked on extensions onto those frames so that they would become Basically, a, a double deep Langstroth is what I gave them for frames. As we progress along in the video, you're going to see how the bees use the comb that I gave them to get established, and then they began to draw a comb uh, to make their nest bigger underneath uh, on those frame extensions that I've got put in there. It's easier to see it than explain it, but you'll see it. So check it out. I just saw a queen, lots of brood. Should win her okay. That was based on September's inspection. Let's see, where's the heat? Heat's right in here. Heat's right here. Cold here. All right, so this is where the bees are. No surprise there, because that's where the entrance is. So let's start from this side. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have a harvest. Let's look. Couple dead hive beetles there. Now this hive looks like it's rocking on the outside when you when you um, look at the entrance. And there's bees all the way down here, and beetles galore. Look at this. Let's see if we can get rid of these beetles. Oh my goodness. See now this is the irony of it. So I've got tons of bees, but tons of beetles. Tons of beetles and tons of bees. All right. So how does that work, huh? Uh, we got a lot less beetles now. Okay, so they're underneath the trap, so I'm going to smoosh the trap down. That's what happens. Sometimes these traps don't seal, and the beetles get right underneath. Now I see honey. Now I'm expecting there might be extra honey. A beetle that we can mush. Now they were very busy out on the outer frames at some point in the season. But nothing doing right now. Just beetles. Just beetles hanging out. 
Oh, look at that. Look at that comb. That's all honeycomb. They ate it all. That's empty. But you can tell by the size of the cell that was honey. That's what it was for. Look at this. So now it's just empty. Empty except for beetles. All right, what's next? All right, not much. This is a frame that I, this is a frame that I put together it's a Langstroth medium with just an extension on it. And this is empty, empty comb. A little bit of honey now. All right, see that? Just a little. Just a little bit of honey. All right, fine, good. I'm happy to see that. A little bit more honey now. And will we keep seeing more and more? I think we will. And we might wanna install new beetle traps too. All right, there's, there's honey. And this is again another frame that I put an extension on. This is a Langstroth medium, there's more honey. All right, now I believe this colony is thriving, but I need to get in a little further. They do have the beetles though. We're gonna get some more beetles mashed right here. They're keeping them at bay pretty good, but I just don't like seeing this many in there. I see honey, honey at the tops of all these frames. The bees look really good. Now I've got more of these traps I can give them to. Let's see if that, uh, looks like the beetles have eaten into them. Yeah, that's still good. I see honey here. I see honey, honey. All right, so we're going to keep moving along until we find brood. All right. That's got a little more honey on it. So we've got two or three partial frames, nothing but honey. This one looks a lot more filled. Yes. All right, that's actually a harvestable frame. All right, so we got a, we finally got a, a horizontal hive that has a harvestable frame. So I'm gonna brush these bees and there's another full frame of honey there. Uh, let's brush them and smoke them a little. Okay, bees, we're gonna get you out of here. Put them right at the entrance. Okay, off you go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to make a makeshift honey storage. I've gotta use a few of these. I'm gonna have to use a few of these together. Probably three. I'm gonna have to stack up three nuke boxes together. One, two, three here. Because that's uh, a deep frame. Okay, robber bees are coming. It don't take long. There's a harvestable frame I need to put a cover on because they do not kid around, these robbers. And there's more robbers right now. Get, go on, go on. They get a whiff of that honey. 
Okay. Got another frame that I believe is a harvesting frame. Not as much as I thought it was. Not really. I'm gonna let them have it. I mean, that's not really worth going after. Maybe the one next to it actually has more. Let's just keep moving till we see brood. Here we go. Open nectar. So, they, they got enough food. I'm not worried about this colony going through the winter. They're gonna cap all that off. Now I can come back in the spring and take these. I'm just curious to see where their brood is. How far along I have to go till I find brood. Got some of that JB Weld work in there. open nectar still. And what's on that one? Ah, finally, I think I see brood. Hive beetle, we're gonna smush you. There we go. One last hive beetle. All right, let's get some, let's just make sure we got some brood and eggs. Loosen up their tight bond. And let's see if we see some happiness here. Yes, we do. There's hatching brood, there's open brood. Uh, not a lot of brood, I mean. They didn't really draw down too far. They pretty much just used, uh, they got open brood here. They're gonna winter fine. I just wanted to make sure they got a decent brood frame of, um, hopefully, let's see if we see some eggs. I wouldn't mind just looking at a, a brood frame with just a little more action going on it. Put that there. more activity. Uh, they got plenty of honey stores. And it looks like they started to draw the comb down, but then the dearth sets in and that's where they stop. I see very young larvas, so I don't think we need to go any further than this. But they got the beetle situation going on here like crazy. I'll squish what I can. And we're going to put some traps in, I think, for them. Okay. Well, you can see now, if we go further into the brood nest, you see that comb that they drew underneath the connector? So they're happy. This, this colony should winter over just fine. They've got lots of honey banding at the corners. These are all full of honey at some level. There's no shortage at all. So these are survivor bees. Let's just give them a little bit of help with the beetles. Uh, what do we got here? I'll keep these traps right at the edge of the brood nest for them. Ah, uh, let's see, that had brood on it. So I suppose anything with capped honey 
I can take because they got lots of it on their their other frames with brood. This frame has open nectar, so I can't really use that. That has open nectar, I think. Yeah, it's pretty light. That has what? What's this got? They're eating some honey in the corner. It's actually got quite a bit of honey right there. Um, maybe that one? Like I say, I don't want to leave more than they need. Capped honey here. Let's look at it. Maybe we can harvest from this one. There's a little bit of open nectar on it. Boy, I'd really like to find more capped honey. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not gonna go to waste if I come back and get it in the spring. Because by then it'll be capped. How's this? This is capped with a little bit of open nectar in the middle. Boy, they just keep at it with that, don't they? Making it hard for the beekeeper. What's this frame again? Ah, uh, that is harvestable, but it's barely anything. Barely anything to speak of. I don't know. First year, this is just empty comb that we can maybe uh, save for next year. We're gonna need a division board, or at least empty frames. They, they, they worked all the way over to here. Now when they, when they nest this winter, I think they're gonna be right in here. There goes a beetle, squished him. Put these traps on the bottom of the floor for him. Okay, Let's see if we can get these in here for them to trap beetles. There's one. Yeah, there are a lot of beetles in there. I mean, a lot. It did trap quite a few. Well, hopefully, we'll give them enough that they can drive them down this way and get them caught in. Let's see what happens. We can put two side by side right there. That'll be the beetle trap alley. They look good. And I would have liked to have seen more honey, obviously. But again, this, is, this was a, a, a cutout that I took out of a tree. Yeah, I've got a video of me um, cutting them out. The homeowner was clearing his lot to build a house. And... Excuse me a minute. I'm trying to think while I'm doing this at the same time. So the, the homeowner was clearing his lot. I don't know if I had it this way or this way. And they took down a bee tree. And I was really bummed that they took down a bee tree. But he called me and I came over and I got the bees and I had to cut them out of the, the, uh, the hive that they were living in and inside the hollow of the tree. Okay. More beetles, look at them. I'm gonna squish them all. All right, let's not give them any beetles back that are alive. Okay. All right, close them up. Close them up for winter. Again, I need a division board in some of these big ones. So I'm a little disappointed as far as the honey goes, but again, let's just take some quick notes. This is how we learn, right? 
Um, okay, so good amount of honey. Good amount of honey, but not harvestable. None for harvest. None for harvest, should winter well. That's all we need to know about them. Oh, well, how about this? Lots of beetles. Lots of beetles. Lots of high beetles, but under control. Because they are a thriving colony, but they did have a number of beetles in there, didn't they? Okay. Now it should be good. Tighten everything up. I'll see you in the spring. Meanwhile, we can save this comb. We'll just store this. I'm gonna shake these bees off. Go on, bees. We're gonna save this for next year. Or melt it, I'm not sure, but we should probably save it for next year. Because look at this. That's nice honeycomb. Okay, so this is this is just gonna be comb that we're gonna save for next year. We got some nice honeycomb. And there's some hive beetles running around that I'm trying to pinch. But I'll save it. And uh, that'll give them a head start on next year. So hopefully by doing that, uh, by giving them comb that we saved from the year before, that's gonna be less nectar and, and uh, resources, food resources they, that they need to devote to building this comb. So therefore that should translate to a better honey harvest provided all things equal as far as weather and so forth, but that's never consistent. So uh, hopefully if it's on average, we'll have a little better than average uh, honey uh, crop for next year. But I believe that these bees are going to winter over just fine. Well, friends, as you can see, you don't always get to harvest honey. I was uh, hoping that we could have harvested some honey out of this particular colony. The good thing was is that through the other colonies of uh, horizontal hives, I was able to harvest about four additional frames of honey. That's not a huge amount. But these are the first year or first season that these bees have had under their belt. So I'm optimistic that uh, they're going to do very well through the winter because they all look like they had enough honey stores for the winter, especially the hive that we were in today. And uh, as, as a good steward to the bees, you can't take more away from them than what they need. So judging by the looks of them, they needed the honey they had. I highly doubt that there's going to be an issue of starvation. There, there seem to be plenty. And I would much rather come back in the spring, and if I have extra honey, then I can just take it. And that's no problem because the honey flow in the spring in Georgia is just phenomenal, and they can build up very quickly. So as soon as that honey flow begins, I could take away some of that surplus honey, harvest that, and uh, install some of those frames of comb that they had built up from this year. And that way they can just pack it with honey and not have to use as many resources in order to build their honeycomb. So friends, if you found this video educational, um, share it with other people that are looking into horizontal hives and um, um, by all means, uh, give it a thumbs up if you uh, found it to be beneficial. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I also wanna thank all the new subscribers to the Enjoy Beekeeping channel. So friends, I hope you have a great rest of your season. I know we're at the end of the year, so um, I hope you have a great winter season. And uh, I know everybody's looking forward to spring. So we'll see you at the next video. Enjoy beekeeping, friends.